Is it true that you became uh, a lawyer and you became gay because of Will? You sound like, with respect, Osama bin Laden. You do get in trouble if you are a white person who puts on yes. black face yes. on Halloween or a black person who puts on white face yes. for Halloween. And people said that that was racist. Megyn Kelly's thoughts on blackface, Santa being white, body shaming, and how Will and Grace made me gay? <laughs> kind of. You don't know the half of it. It's not that Megyn Kelly hasn't said terrible things. She has. She said it many times. She said it, and she was real defiant when she said it. Yeah. But when she got back to that office, it was somebody in that office she had to look in their face. It was Jamal the yeah. intern, probably. Megyn Kelly was a big hit. Very much a kind of rising star, right? She had the, the right look, she had the right attitude, the presence. She was a big success and seemed to be going good places. I think that everybody misunderstood the quantity that was Megyn Kelly. Megyn Kelly became quickly known for having a very forthright attitude. So I'll start with you, Eric. What makes you dominant and me submissive? And who died and made you scientist in chief? Who could forget December 2013, when Megyn Kelly sparked controversy when she claimed, insisted, that Santa Claus was white. Santa Claus should not be a white man anymore. And by the way, for all you kids watching at home, Santa just is white, but this person is just arguing that, that maybe we should, we should also have a black Santa, but you know. Santa is white? I mean, it depends on which mall you go to. Whew, she had to drink a lot of eggnog after this. After this blew up, she kind of doubled down on, on the point. Apparently, we ignited quite a controversy the other night. I offered a tongue-in-cheek message for any kids watching, saying that Santa, who I joked, is a real person whose race is identifiable, is white. And then Megan tried to play the whole thing off like a joke, like she doesn't say it to her kids every night before bed. August 2015, Megyn Kelly co-moderated the Republican presidential debate. It was watched by 24 million people. It was a huge deal. That presidential debate was the first time she had a really kind of nationwide, all political spectrum audience. And she also became known for being one of the first people to hold Donald Trump to account. And she had the biggest moment of the night. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account Only is Rosie several... O'Donnell. But it was actually, I think, what happened afterwards that really made her front page news kind of a figure. After the debate, Donald Trump started a feud with Megyn Kelly. You could see there was blood coming out of her eyes, blood coming out of her wherever. I'm not going to go into the details because I am a gentleman. Mr. Trump thought the question I asked was unfair and felt I was attacking him. I felt he was asked a tough but fair question. Trump, who is the front runner, will not apologize. And I certainly will not apologize for doing good journalism. In 2016, she sat down with him on Fox News for an official interview. Good evening, I'm Megyn Kelly. The special Welcome. was interesting for a number of reasons. The main one being it Thank actually didn't do very well. And later employers should have paid more attention to that. So I'll be leaving Fox News at the week's end and starting a new adventure, joining the journalists at NBC News. In January 2017, after 12 years with Fox News, Megyn Kelly makes a big move to NBC. It's a multi-million dollar deal. In June 2017, Megyn Kelly's Sunday Nights with Megyn Kelly debuts, and her first guest, wait for it, Alex Jones, the Sandy Hook denier. Yikes. Look at an organization like NBC, decades of history and experience, and yet you somehow have Megyn Kelly interviewing Alex Jones. Yes. How can all these presumably smart people make a decision this bad? Megyn Kelly was slammed for giving Alex Jones a platform at all and lobbing a bunch of softballs at the guy. Nelba Marquez Green tweeting photos of her deceased six-year-old daughter to the reporter, writing, here you go, Megyn Kelly. Her name is Anna Grace Marquez Green. Say her name, stare at this, and tell me it's worth it. Another big moment for Megan, September 2017, she takes over the 9 a.m. spot on the Today Show. It was awkward. It's her first day on the job, right? It gave a bit of a hint of what was to come. She has the cast of the Will and Grace reboot on, and get this, she asked someone in the audience if the show made them gay. Is it true that you became uh, a lawyer and you became gay because of Will? <laughs> I mean, TV is a powerful medium. 
but maybe not that powerful. The Will and Grace thing and the gay thing is gonna work out great. We're three shows into Megyn Kelly today and she starts a feud with Jane Fonda by asking her a question about plastic surgery. She was not really comfortable in those kinds of environments. It wasn't her environment. You're not proud to admit that you've had work done. Why not? We really want to talk about that now? <laughs> oh, she asks stupid questions. Of course she does. She does. This isn't her thing. January 2018, another gaffe from Megan. She has the social media influencer Fit Mom on. A woman who was a mother, has several kids, have become well known for her appearance. And she tells this colorful story on how she keeps the weight off. Some of us want to be shamed. When I was in law school oh, and I was gaining on. weight, I said to my stepfather, if you see me go to that kitchen one more time, you say, where are you going, fat ass? Uh. Right? And it works. So facing scrutiny the next day, she did not sit down fat ass. She stood up and apologized on her show. We begin today with weight in America. I said something yesterday on this show that clearly struck a nerve. We were discussing body shaming others, something I absolutely do not support. In fact, quite the opposite. Another net good moment for Megan, she interviewed Russian President Vladimir Putin and the interview only got six million viewers. Is that okay with you? She took a lot of heat for the interview itself. <laughs> I don't care. People felt that she was out of her league, outpaced, didn't have the depth for this kind of hard-hitting interview. You've stated explicitly you believe that America interfered in Russian elections, right? It does so constantly. But Russia did not interfere in America's election. No. It's very difficult to hold somebody like Vladimir Putin to account. He's not a straight shooter, per se. The final straw for Meghan was October 2018. She has a segment about Halloween. Fun, right? No, not so much. I'm a little fired up over Halloween costumes this morning. We were having a conversation talking about wearing blackface for Halloween. You do get in trouble if you are a white person who puts on yes, blackface yes. on Halloween, or a black person who puts on white face yes. for Halloween. Like, I, that, okay, back that, when I was a kid, that was okay as long as you were dressing up as like a character. Then she's digging herself deeper by going on about the Real Housewives of New York star Luann. Luann, as she dresses Diana Ross, and she made her skin look darker than it really is. And people said that that was racist. And it's just like, stop talking. I, I don't know how like that got racist on Halloween. The outcry over the blackface comments was extensive. And for the umpteenth time, she tries to apologize on air. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Megyn Kelly, and I want to begin with two words. I'm sorry. But at this point, no one's having it. Well, she apologized to the staff. She owes a bigger apology to folks of color around the country. It's not racist on Halloween, it's racist every day. How a segment on Halloween costumes can go wrong is when you make it about blackface being okay. Her ratings had been just in free fall. They just wanted her out of that. January 2019, Megyn Kelly is officially out at NBC and she walks away with what CNN reports as $30 million payout. So what do you do after being ousted from one of the biggest networks? You start a podcast. Okay. Turns out The Megyn Kelly Show on Sirius XM is actually a hit. It's very popular among conservatives and at the end of 2022, it had the biggest growth of any podcast. She still pops up in the media, even amidst the complete fire hose of quotes and information and news and whatever. She still kind of rises above that. It seems like her star has dimmed, sure, but it's not completely extinguished. She's got one of the top rated podcasts on iTunes and she'll be the first one to tell you that.